the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Kinsey and members of the Commission. In a moment, I'll describe the activities that are subject to this settlement agreement, which I'll refer to as the subject activities in this presentation. Uh, these activities largely involved activities that MBR assert were associated with oil field operations on the, on the site. The next few slides, though, provide some background on the site. In the background of this slide, by the way, is maritime succulent scrub, one of the n rare native plant communities found on the properties. This slide contains a map showing the approximate locations of the properties collectively known as Banning Ranch, where the subject activities occurred. The properties are located east of the Santa Ana River, which is this blue line here, and extend east into Newport Beach. Slide three is an aerial photograph of the properties shown here outlined in green. Banning Ranch, historically used as ranch lands, is now an active oil field where components of the operations predate the Coastal Act and its predecessor, Proposition 20, the Coastal Initiative. As you can see, the properties are largely ringed by extensive development, and thus the dearth of natural areas in this region make it all the more important to protect and restore the resources on the site. As I'll describe in more detail in this presentation, this settlement agreement will provide for active native habitat restoration on 18.45 acres of the site that are currently disturbed or developed. This would be one of the largest restoration projects ever put in place by a commission enforcement action. In addition, through the settlement agreement, MBR has agreed not to engage in the large-scale vegetation removal activities or mowing that were occurring on the site until a couple years ago when a temporary suspension was agreed to. This will allow for many more acres of habitat on the properties to recover from this activity. In addition, numerous oil wells will be removed from the properties where they might impact, potentially impact surrounding natural areas. And the properties do support a variety of natural areas. The site is intersected by a coastal bluff here that is cut by ravines such as here and there are wetlands and wetland habitat in the lowlands to the left here, and uh, mesas with grasslands to the right, as well as the uh, coastal sage scrub and scrub habitats in the ravines along the bluffs and on the mesa as well. And since those features likely weren't visible on that last slide, here are some close-ups of a representative coastal bluff and a ravine and a wetland in a grassland on a mesa. This is a complicated site with lots of properties, excuse me, lots of parties and myriad different areas. And so some background on the site and history of the situation, the settlement is useful here. The surface of Banning Ranch is owned by two of the parties to this agreement, Era Energy LLC and Cherokee Newport Beach LLC. The third party to the settlement agreement, MBR, manages the land use for the owners. The ongoing oil operations on the properties have been conducted by West Newport Oil Company, or West Newport, on behalf of various mineral rights owners since 1983. Horizontal Development LLC is the current owner of the mineral rights, which it acquired in 1999. At the time of passage of the Coastal Initiative in 1972, the oil operator then applied to the Coastal Commission's predecessor in this area, the South Coast Conservation Commission, for an exemption from the new law's permitting requirements based upon a vested rights claim to continue the existing operations. The Commission issued such an exemption in 1973, which I'll call the 1973 exemption in this presentation. Here's an overview again. The blue outlined areas are areas referred to as the oil remainder areas, which total about 13 acres of the site under, under the control of West Newport. A road also connects the two remainder areas. Oil operations have blanketed most of the remainder areas continuously since before the Coastal Act, and as a result, the coastal resources in these areas are limited compared to the rest of the site. The central questions of this enforcement case have largely revolved around, not around whether development has occurred, but around how to interpret that 1973 exemption. And as a result of that interpretation, 
whether the activities undertaken on the properties fall within the scope of the exemption. All the parties agree that a number of wells have been drilled and associated, dr associated oil field activities undertaken on the site after 1973 and pursuant to the 1973 exemption. And some of these wells remain in operation today. However, staff believes that additional wells have been drilled and additional activities undertaken that were not covered by the 1973 exemption. And thus, those activities are unpermitted. MBR has taken a different position based upon their interpretation of the exemption. The positions the parties have taken are briefly described in the staff report. However, the purpose of this settlement agreement is to put those disagreements behind us and at the same time to resolve this enforcement matter by addressing the impacts of the subject activities. And finally, this settlement agreement is also intended to resolve the disagreement over interpretation of the 1973 exemption for the purpose of providing clarity for the future of the site, in part by providing for active restoration of certain impacted areas and passive restoration of the remainder of the impacted areas through the cessation of activities that disturb those areas, thus allowing for an accurate analysis of the resources on the site. That was some quick background on the properties. Now I'll turn to the subject activities addressed by the settlement agreement, which inc include drilling and operation of new wells that staff believes were not covered by the 1973 exemption. I'll refer to those wells as additional wells in this presentation. Extens extensive removal of major vegetation has also occurred on the properties. Drilling and operation of additional wells in many cases includes, but may not be limited to such development activities as removal of vegetation, grading, placement of, of solid materials such as imported fill and machinery, installation of pads and wells, and construction of roads and pipelines. Each of these acti activities constitutes development under the Coastal Act, and therefore, unless exempt, requires authorization under the Coastal Act, usually a CDP. And uh, crunch some numbers here. So, uh, staff believes there have been 153 additional wells uh, drilled on the site, many of which have been abandoned or gone. There are, there are currently 85 wells remaining on the site uh, that are active or idle, some of them exempt and some of them in dispute. Of those 85 wells, 32, the parties can agree, uh, are exempt and will continue in place. In the 50, of the 53 additional wells, 41 are located outside the remainder area. And pursuant to this settlement agreement, MBR has agreed to remove 17 of those 41 wells and either remove or uh, apply after the fact for the remaining 24 of those 41 additional wells. The second major category of development addressed by this settlement agreement is removal of major vegetation, in other words, ecologically significant vegetation, which constitutes development under the coast slack and therefore requires authorization unless otherwise exempt. Biological surveys describe the vegetation on the site and identify areas of native plant communities and protected habitats, including habitats for sensitive species within and adjacent to where vegetation removal occurred, often in the form of mowing. This mowing affected not just grasslands, but in some areas, native scrublands and other habitats. The mowing at issue thus involves removal of major vegetation in certain areas. You can see in this slide the telltale signs of mowing. The arrow on the left shows the edge between mowed and unmowed vegetation, and the arrow on the right shows the uh, tractor lines left by the tractor pulling a blade across the site. And this slide is an aer aerial view of the same, uh, same area with the uh, arrows in the same locations. Again, you can see the edge between unmowed and mowed vegetation and, and perhaps you can see the, the tractor lines, uh, the arrows pointing to them there. <coughs> Mowing has ceased over the past few years as a result of an informal agreement by the oil operator and MBR at the request of staff. Pursuant to this settlement agreement, 
MBR is legally committing to continue to refrain from excessive mowing on the, f on the site thus allowing the mowed areas to continue to recover from the effects of the subject activities. This is an approximation on this slide of the areas of the properties that have been mowed before the in informal agreement to stop. It isn't necessarily representative of the areas where native vegetation has been removed, but the point is to show you the extent of mowing that will be legally addressed as a result of this settlement agreement. MBR and West Newport have said that the vegetation removal was intended to be simply oil field maintenance and required fuel modification. And staff does recognize the need to, potential, uh, to abate potential uh, fire hazards on the site and thus some limited fuel modification that meets the requirements of Orange County Fire Authority and Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources or DOGGER such as in close proximity to active wells and homes has and will continue on the site. The subject activities described on the past few slides and in the staff report constitute development under the Coastal Act. Staff maintains that some significant portion of these activities was not covered by the 1973 exemption and thus the development has occurred without the required CDP. Coastal Act Section 3810 authorizes issuance of a cease and desist order when the Commission finds that development has occurred without the required CDP. Thus, the criterion for issuance of a cease and desist order is met here. Again, this settlement provides a consensual resolution of these, these issues. The Coastal Act authorizes issuance of a restoration order when the Commission finds that development has occurred without a CDP that the development is inconsistent with the Coastal Act and development is causing continuing resource damages. Each of these standards has been met in this case on shown, as shown on the next few slides. And the settlement agreement provides a remedy for these impacts. The first criterion is the same criterion as just discussed for a cease and desist order. The second criterion for issuance of a restoration order has also been met. Uh, that development is inconsistent with the Coastal Act. The staff report describes some of the affected resources on the site, and I'm going to highlight a couple of those here. There are a number of ecologically significant habitats on the property that rise to the level of ESHA, such as areas of maritime succulent scrub, coastal sage scrub that provides habitat for the California gnat catcher, native grasslands, and grasslands that are documented foraging habitats for raptors, and vernal pools that provide habitat for the endangered San Diego fairy shrimp. These habitats are more thoroughly described in staff ecologist Dr. Engel's memo attached to the staff report as Exhibit 9. The areas of ESHA on the properties have not been fully delineated in this action because this is not an action to site and design proposed development. However, Dr. Engel has noted that collectively the subject activities have impacted areas of ESHA on the site by either disturbing ESHA or failing to be undertaken in a manner that is incompatible with the health of, health of adjacent ESHA and non-compliance with sections 30240A and B respectively. Restoration of these habitats will be addressed, uh, will be done pursuant to this settlement agreement. The properties also support different types of wetlands, such as salt marshes and vernal pools, as described in more detail in Dr. Engel's memo. Some of the areas impacted by the subject activities contain wetlands, such as vernal pools. And here's a vernal pool in this slide. Fill wetlands is limited pursuant to section 30233 of the Coastal Act. In some prior matters, the commission has also considered wetlands to be a type of ESHA and has protected them under section 30240. And this could be especially true in the case of vernal pools that support protected species, such as the endangered San Diego fairy shrimp, shown here. Either way, when viewed pursuant to section 30233 or 30240, those subject activities that involve placement of materials in or removal of vegetation from a wetland thus resulted in fill or impacts to a wetland. The staff report notes that certain subject activities resulted in impacts 
to archaeological resources. We have worked throughout the settlement process and through the mailing for this item to ensure protection of cultural and archaeological resources. And the precise actions to ensure protection have been fluid. However, we now have more certainty on the matter and can report that now. The known impacts to cultural resources resulting from the subject activities centered around the drilling of two wells around 1980 that resulted in disturbance of an archaeological site without necessary mitigation measures. This site has been described, had been described by archaeologists prior to the drilling and described as an area consisting of dark soil, fire cracked rock and shellfish, covering an area of 50 meters by 150 meters. Pursuant to this settlement agreement, the cultural site has been incorporated into the restoration areas where the site will be restored to its natural condition and preserved in perpetuity as open space. This will dovetail nicely with the 2.5 acre mitigation project which has already been commenced on the site. And on this slide is a long distance shot of the mitigation project's planting pods on the bluff. This mitigation project has been undertaken by MBR pursuant to a previous enforcement action in 2009 involving a utility contractor that was using the properties for a staging area. The earlier mitigation project, as well as the restoration areas proposed per this settlement agreement, envelop the cultural site that's been impacted. Last, the third and final criteria for issuance of this settlement agreement is also satisfied. The impacts to habitats resulting from subject activities are causing damage to resources as defined in the Commission's regulations. For instance, in this photo, you can see one of the wells designated as an additional well installed in an area that is surrounded mostly by native habitat. This is a well that will be, uh, the well is up in the upper right there, the arrow's pointing to it. This is a well that will be removed pursuant to the settlement agreement and thus this mechanized intrusion into the natural area will be eliminated. Commission staff and MBR have worked closely over the past months to reach this resolution. MBR has agreed to the settlement agreement which orders and authorizes MBR to, to one, reserve, resolve all additional wells located outside the oil remainder area by removing certain wells and either removing or applying to retain other wells. Two, undertake 18.45 acres of restoration activities for mitigation and restorative purposes. Three, formally agree not to engage in certain vegetation removal activities. And four, resolve its liability for civil penalties by deed restricting 24.6 acres of the properties, which includes 18.45 acre, the 18.45 acre restoration area, and an additional 6.15 acres of wetlands. And one way to value this action is to look at the price uh, some state agencies have paid for conservation easements in the state. Uh, the upper range for these easements is roughly $100,000 per acre and you'd expect to be in the upper range here in coastal Orange County. So the value of the, the property de-districted for open space by MBR here is uh, approximately 2.46 million and the, and the property that's been de-districted solely in lieu of penalties for conservation is $615,000. This, this slide shows the restoration polygons in yellow within which 18.45 acres of disturbed and developed area will be restored to natural habitat consistent with the surrounding habitat. The pink area contains an additional 6.5 acre, acres of wetlands that will be de-restricted for conservation. Now the 18.45 acre number was arrived at by calculating the number of acres affected by the subject activities that remain disturbed as a result of the subject activities and providing the amount of restoration acreage, providing that amount of restoration acreage, and then adding additional acres to provide mitigation. As pointed out, there is some disagreement about whether unpermitted activities have occurred and therefore the extent of impacts. 
Thus, the mitigation ratio is varied depending upon the different interpretations of the 1973 exemption. But in any event, the restoration covers both the number of acres affected as well as provides mitigation. However you look at it, this proposed restoration project remains perhaps the largest ever put in place through a commission settlement agreement. Restoration activities will occur in each of these polygons, which ensures that each of the habitat, each of the habitat types impacted by the subject activities will be represented in the restoration project. And I'll briefly describe a couple of those habitat types in the next few slides. Coastal sage scrub. Coastal sage scrub is a native plant community that is increasingly rare in the coastal zone and in Southern California provides habitat for numerous rare species, many of which are found only in this region. A couple of those species are the coastal California gnatcatcher, which is designated as threatened by the uh, federal government, and the coastal, coastal cactus wren, designated as a California species of special concern by Ca California Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'll also point out that the well on the left is another one of the wells that will be removed and abandoned to Dogger standards pursuant to the settlement agreement. And here are the cactus wren and the California gnatcatcher, both of which depend on the types of habitat that will be restored here under this agreement. The properties also support extensive grasslands, purple needlegrass grasslands, an increasingly rare native plant community occur throughout the site, often side by side or intermixed with non-native grasslands, which also provide dwelling and foraging habitat for numerous species of, of mammals, reptiles, and birds, such as the, the burrowing owl, and many other species of raptor. For instance, MBR's biological consultant has documented American kestrel and peregrine falcon prey strike captures and in this grassland, which extends off to the right of this photo, and white-tailed kite foraging over grasslands on the properties. And here are the kite and the peregrine, both of which are designated as fully protected species by California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Under the settlement agreement, disturbed areas will be restored to the, nat to the native habitats and others described on the previous few slides. The candidate restoration areas were chosen by locating large blocks of disturbed areas, such as the area shown within the blue dashed line on this slide, that are contiguous with extensive existing habitat areas. As further described in Dr. Engel's memo, consolidating the restoration areas into large blocks of restored habitat increases, increases the likelihood of a successful restoration on this site. The restoration will also be timed to avoid any impacts from removal of the oil wells and the oil field infrastructure and from restorative grading required under the settlement agreement. However, pursuant to this agreement, MBR and the commission would be agreeing to immediately treat the restoration areas for the purpose of any future permit action as if they are restored with native habitat. Also, through the settlement agreement, MBR is agreeing not to use the 24.6 acre de-districted area for, fut for future Coastal Act mitigation purposes. The restoration acreage is increased when taking into account the areas impacted by subject activities where active restoration is not occurring, but where vegetation milling will be formally eliminated. This area on the slide isn't necessarily representative of all such areas, but you can see a characteristic coastal sage scrub species bouncing back in this previously mowed area following cessation of the mowing. For permit actions, these areas would be analyzed in their present state following the cessation of mowing and the subject activities. And to show you the growth since the mowing has stopped, uh, here's an aerial photo on the left from a few years ago and a ground level photo from this year, both looking towards that shrub in the background and you can see the encelia cropping up where it was either limited or not present previously. In conclusion, staff recommends that the commission issue the proposed settlement agreement to resolve 
the enforcement case against NBR, the settlement agreement ensures that a substantial amount of native habitat, over 18 acres that will provide foraging and nesting opportunities for rare and endangered wildlife will be restored to this site that already supports a valuable ecosystem. 